Man Horror host here in the bleak in the bleak mid winter. It was December in eighteen fifty five. It had snowed for days. The adults called the bleakest mid mid winter to hit the market town of Kingsworthy in living memory and weren't happy. They said all routes to the outside world were impossible and supplies were growing short. The children of Kingsworthy saw things differently. Everything covered in snow. The schools closed until further notice. The world was a magical place full of opportunities for mischief and adventure. They thought battles of snowballs careered, careered madly down hills and makeshift sledges and rejoiced at being able to walk across the town pond in defiance of the signs warning them not to. One other thing bothered the adults a rumour there were, there were that there was a lunatic at large. What is a lunatic? Mary was right to, wanted to know. That's someone who isn't right in the head, said her brother Percy. I hear he's been killing chickens, cows, and even people. Pa said he would, would be strong by his watsits, whatever his watsits are. Pa says that a lot about a lot of people. Ma agrees with him. For Percy, that seemed, settled it. Anyone hated by both his parents is okay in his book. I want to be a lunatic when I grow up. I thought you wanted to be a railway railroad engineer. Nothing to stop me being both. It was night the children whispered in the dark. Seven-year-old Mary was kneeling on top of her bed, bouncing up and down. Percy, who was two years older, was sitting up in bed. Neither child was in the mood for sleeping. You know what I want to be when I grow up, said Mary. I want to be a lion taper. And where, and where, and just where are you going to get a lion from? A pet shop, Mary stopped her bouncing and turned on a bedroom light. Tell me a story, Percy. I don't know any. Yes, you do. You know hundreds of them. Tell me about Hansel and Gretel. Well, okay. Once upon a time, there were two kids called Hansel and Gretel. Hansel was very good looking, but his sister was probably the ugliest girl in the entire world. That's not how it starts. It is when I'm telling it. You're telling it wrong. Now start again, or you'll be sorry. And this time, Gretel better be pretty. Not only was she ugly, she was also stupid, and everybody hated her. Uh, you're a cretin, do you know that? A cretin. The door flew open. The father stood in the doorway, red in the face. I said in his hand, How many times do I have to tell you, brats? When you go to bed, just shut up and sleep. From the master bedroom came the mother's voice. What is it now? Is it those blasted kids again? Minding your own business. I'm dealing with it. Well... Could you do it quickly? I'm trying to get some sleep. Shut up, you bold bat. Shut up yourself. Right, that does it. Pointing a warning finger at Mary Percy. Mr. Rosetta closed the door as abruptly as he opened it. The children heard him stomping down the hallway to the master bedroom. The slamming in the door was followed by a lively and faithfully muffled exchange of views as Mr. and Mrs. Rosetta set about drunkenly blaming one another for all their troubles. You know what, said Percy, I heard you can summon a lunatic and make him get rid of people. All you have to do is say the word lunatic three times, then the name or whoever you want to see the back of. Shall we try? Might as well. Okay, I'll do pa first. Percy closed his eyes and crossed his fingers on both hands. Lunatic, 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 pa. Now my turn. May he cover the brother's eye and finger ritual and in tone. Lunatic, 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 ma. The children opened their eyes and crossed their fingers. Mr. Miss, Mr. Lucy was too ugly. Oh well, said Percy. It was worth a try. Morning came. Lucy and Percy and Mercy got up and fixed themselves with gruel for breakfast. In fact, there was no sign of Ma and Pa. Betty registered on their young minds. Said Pa's business temporarily closed due to lack of stock. His drinking had worsened. As for Ma, now it was normal for her, the parents to sleep midday. What are we going to do today? Mary asked as she and her brother put their coats on hot on the hallway. Let's go to the river, said Percy. We'll see how far we can slide. Without waiting to hear his sister's views on the matter, Percy opened the front door and stepped outside. His breath stepped in the crisp air. Fresh snow had fallen during the night, and blettering all the footsteps as he had littered the road the day before. Well, not quite all. Look, that is Mary. Look as at what? Mary came out and closed the, the door behind her. See these tracks? I'm not mistaken. They're goat footprints. 
Probably one, one of Mrs. McGinley's goats. They're always getting loose. I bet the poor will be exposed to death. Let's follow the tracks and find out. No thanks. The last thing I could see want to see the dead goat. Let's go to the river, like you said. I don't know what we could do. It could be dangerous. Mary laughed at her brother's sudden ghostly show of caution. She ran to the hedge and separated the front garden from the road and grabbed a handful of snow. Don't you dare, moon Percy. Not that now. Giggling, Mary ran at her brother and caught him in the face with the snowball. Then she hide tailed it down the road. Percy took a few moments to recover from the shock of a face full of snow. When he had done so, his one fault was... For revenge, I'm going to get you, he yelled, tracing after Mary. You see, if I don't, the unbounded crow privated, provided Mary a ready-made fortress as well. A plentiful supply of fresh snow. By the time Lucy caught her, reached her, she had three snowballs lined up in the cart, plus one in her hand, flat. She got Percy in her face again. Right, you've asked for it. Percy scooped a handful of snow and swiftly compacted it into snowball. He was going to do so. M- M- Mary launched a second bus for, 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 and a third. The first hit uh, Percy's arm. The second got him on the chest. Mary ducked behind the cart, but it didn't her no good. Percy merely went round. It got her from close quarters. A brief, a frantic exchange of fire followed. A few shots finding the targets to a cess of laughter. It finally got too much for Mary. She fled. As luck would have it, she ran into a patch of ice and went, down she went. Ever the gentleman, Percy dropped the snowball he was going to that to help, hurried to his sister's aid. Are you all right, sis? Yes, I'm fine. No bones broken. I'll be wait. What's this? She held her held her hand I held up her hand, it was covered in blood. Oh my god, I'm bleeding. Where? I don't know. She Mary looked down at herself in full situation of having fountains of blood gushing out of a open wound. She faintly disappointed when she realized the blood was hers. They were from footprints. Again, the blood. The goat must have cut itself, said Percy thoughtfully. Unless, unless what? Unless it attacked someone in the middle of the night? Doesn't seem likely. No, you see the trail of blood that, mar- that marks like something or somebody is dragged through the snow by a goat? Maybe it was a lunatic. Maybe this, that you're saying the goat, he has goat's feet. Lunatics aren't normal people, you know. I once saw a picture of one one in a magazine and he looked like a wolf he was howling at the moon he was going to have to look into this do you mean follow the footprints I sure do now that's crazy and probably dangerous I know are you coming you bet footprints led to Kingsworthy over the dozen over the frozen river and by the edge of an ancient forest full of imposing trees and shadows neither had gone in the forest before they weren't entirely keen on doing so now what if we got lost said asked Mary and what if it's full of trolls, like people say? I'm not, I ain't afraid of no trolls, Percy snide. We only need to stop from coming, uh, getting home. It's a trail of breadcrumbs. We don't have no breadcrumbs. Darn, we must have brought, we should have brought some with us. Actually, it doesn't matter. We can follow our footprints. Well, Mary, for a girl, you can be real smart sometimes. Percy and Mary looked at one another, each hoping the other had chicken, would chicken out, but it would not be, not to be, and holding hands they entered the forest, almost immediately the sun was banished from their lives. I don't think that it would be this dark, said Mary, or this cold, it feels like we're being watched, said Percy, peering into the gloom. The footprints stretched behind him for him. He wondered for how far in the forest he had to the journey, before he could suggest going back about appearing cowardly. Mary's eyes were like saucers. She walked along the narrow path. She turned her head this way and that, giving a little start whenever she heard an expected sound. The thought of getting the hell out of this forest as quickly as possible played on her mind. A few more steps, she kept telling herself. That's, that is me. For her curiosity started stronger than her fear, and she drawn further and further into the deep, dark forest, where shadow lay thick upon shadow. I don't think like this, said, she said, but Percy Matter, I don't know like this at all. Mary looked back, the edge of the wood, the forest was beyond the view. All she could see were trees and snow in a narrow path, and three sets of footprints, an odd sprinkling of blood. I don't like this neither, she confessed. Perhaps we should go back. 
We cannot go back. Why not? We just can't, that's all. Percy could hardly believe the words that were coming through his lips. It sounded crazy, yet he felt compelled to say them. Come on, I bet we're nearly there. He was right. A trail suddenly turned under a path. It right, led right to a large tree. Percy's first thought was a lunatic must have climbed the tree and would like to pounce on him at any moment. But, when he, but then he saw... Blending in the shadows, a hole in the foot of the tree, a large enough for the company a crouching man, or crouching lunatic for that matter. This is it, he whispered to his sister, the lunatic's there. Mary with his heart raced, she could tell from her brother's face that he was not scared as he, she was, but his eyes told her he wasn't about to do anything sensible. Though she knew it was probably the stupidest thing he'd ever do, she overtook her brother and ducked into the hole. Percy joined her for a moment later. The hole barrel barrel down into the earth in a steep angle. Tree roots formed a roof and ceiling. Get close, said Percy, and get ready to run. Soon they left behind the daylight and were in total darkness, shuffling nerve- nervously to wall forward with their hands raised in front of them. What if the tunnel goes forever, whispered, uh, Mary whispered. What if it leads to hell? Before Percy could answer, uh, her hands encountered something solid. Feels like a door, said Mary. She groped around uh, to her fingers, closed upon a metal ring. I think I found a handle. She turned the ring with a groan and sound, uncomfortable, like a cry of a wounded animal. The door swung open. Ahead of them was a cavern, enlarged as a warehouse, with walls so straight they looked like they'd been carved that way. Bundles of what Percy took to be lined, up, lined in parallel rows, rows on the floor. Each bundle was about nine foot long, six foot wide, and six foot t- high. The cavern was lit with what being what looked like a glowing cloud hanging just beneath the ceiling. Fireflies, said Percy, stepping into the cavern. Millions of them. Overall, the children wandered further from the door than the wise. It's beautiful, said Mary, as the light turned from orange to purple. I wish we could take some home with us. Maybe we can come back with a butterfly net, said Percy, though he knew there was no possibility of being able to reach the fireflies. He considered our boys to catch the insects. He bumped into one of the bundles. Turning to find himself looking at the face of a man, he awkwardly said, awkwardly said, Sorry. Then he jumped back in alarm. What is it? said Mary, annoyed at being distracted by brother's antics. Percy took a deep breath before answering. No, don't do anything silly like scream, Mary. But the, these rags aren't rags. What are they? People. Mary, thousands of them piled on top of each other. And they're all dead. That's it. I'm out here. Mary turned on her heels. Only finds herself facing a solid mass of earth. Frankly, she wrung her hands, her hands over the wall. Where's the door? It has to be here. It has to be so. Calm down. Gra- gra- Percy grabbed his sister's shoulders. Gave her a shake. Do you know what the lunatic? Do you know what the lunatic? What lunatic to know we're here? The lunatic. I've forgotten about. Percy clamped her hand over Mary's mouth and his. Quiet, you fool. You're going to get us killed. Mary raised one of her arms to show compliance. As soon as Percy uncovered her mouth, she quietly whispered, Now what? I guess we have to find another way out. What if there isn't one? Best not to think about it. Slowly, moving slowly and carefully, Percy led the way through the perimeter to the cabin, looking for signs of a door. Although he did not, he tried not to, he couldn't help but glance at the bodies from time to time. Most sported crashes in their throats of forex. Quite a few seem to have the necks or spines broken. However, the corpses had met their ends, and whatever condition they were in, somebody had gone to great trouble to stack them neatly. Percy noted that even their clothes were often rotted. Corpses always looked fresh, as if whatever had killed them had used some kind of preservative to keep them from going off. How many are there? He wondered, reckoning there must be at least a dozen, a hundred cadavers in each bundle, and at least two hundred bundles. Twenty thousand corpses, Percy's mind reeled at the implications. It must have taken decades, if not centuries, to build up such a collection. How did the fiend manage to get away with it for so, so much murder for so long? Percy, Mary grabbed her brother's arms, causing him to jump. Something moved, he pointed down in front of his aisles, running towards the corpse. See it there, see it? The children backed away. 
ready to run if need be. Something pale wiggled from the side of the corpse's bundle. Percy's first thought was it was a rat, but he quickly changed his mind. It's a hand. Very grass, the lunatic. No, I don't think so. The arm which the hand belonged to appeared next. This was followed by a head and torso. The old woman, the man, grasped. It was clearly a head, breath, and death. Help me, he grasped. Don't let me the fame kill me. It'd be, it's all right, said Percy, trying to sound reassuringly as he gingerly approached the man. We'll get you out of here. How? No way out. The old man coughed, closed his eyes, and lay still. Is he dead? Mary asked. Yes, and probably better off for it. Percy stood over the old man, wondering what horrors he must have seen, what apologies he had to endure, agonies he had to endure. The old man opened his eyes and screamed, Run, yo, Percy, before he comes. Mary didn't need to be told twice. She looked, took off like a rocket, with Percy hot on her fields. He suddenly stopped, and Percy had to dodge to avoid running into her. He, he opened his mouth to shut, shut to her. When he saw what she'd seen, a shadow creeping along the wall, quick as a flash, he grabbed, he grabbed his sister and ducked her behind a whole pile of bodies with her. Footsteps sounded. They were coming closer and closer. Percy's heart hammered a grizzling rate. He went to pee and scream at the same time. This is it, a fault. We're going to die. But it wasn't to be. At least not yet. The old man screamed again. The footsteps paused and then headed towards the old man. Percy caught a limp lunatic. He had an upper body, a head of a man, and legs and feet of a goat. Did you see that, Mary Whiskers? He's got horns. Yeah, they ain't no lunatic. There's some kind of devil. That, that is. Percy took his hand. Come on, let's get out of here. Hand in hand, the children headed for the far wall. Their terror threatened to overwhelm them. They turned them into hopeless wrecks and unable to do anything except blubber and scream. It was only an unsurrendable uns- desire to survive. The captains together. The screaming stopped. Percy and Mary stood still and listened. All they could hear was the beating of their hearts and the sound of other- each other's breathing. Where's my... Where? Mary- Mary's mouth. Is it? Footsteps answered. No question. She and Percy died for cover beneath the nearest statue of corpses. They pressed themselves against the dead bodies, hoping to blend in, which Percy, which gave Percy an idea. He pushed the corpse, forcing it into the heap, and plying, creating a gap, very quickly caught on, and ran to the body quite sat opposite. In the, to no time, she made a hole for her own. Percy and Mary inserted themselves into Gavzabas and lay very still. A devil ride. It stood effortless between the siblings, sniffing the air and swin- swirling its head from left to right. For a moment it seemed to look straight at Percy, even look at step towards him, but then it hurried on, continued its search elsewhere. Percy and Mary waited till the footsteps were far away before they called out their hiding places. Breathless and shaking from fear and relief, they knelt at all fours as they gathered their wits about them. Side by side, they called towards the wall. Neither of them wanted, wanted to stand up. They felt safer coming close, keeping closer to the floor. When they reached the wall, Percy reluctantly got to his feet to feel around the door. Mary... However, arraigned and remained on her knees and hands. She was convinced that there was a door. It could, could be a floor. Her sanity hung by a thread. Percy decided to, rec- to reconnoitre. Wait here, Mary, he whispered, pressing himself against the wall. He shuffled along the sideways to be to get a full view of where the holes of each of the holes he passed. Five holes along, he saw the devil. It moved two bodies from their pile laid them to the floor. Now he's tearing one apart. Percy recognised his mother and father as the devil began feasting his mother's arms. He heard someone screaming. The devil looked directly at Percy, too late. Percy realised he wasn't the one who was screaming, before he could stop himself. The devil was upon him. The end.